to you and also to college football? Yeah, to me, he's meant, I mean, that'd be tough to describe. I mean, you know, gave me gave me a shot to, to play college football. Obviously gave me a chance to start coaching, um, you know, very early on. Uh, they hired me as a receiver coach at 23 years old at Texas Tech when not a lot of people would have done that. So, you know, I think believed in me, um, you know, very, very, very early on. And, um, yeah, I had a great relationship. A lot of hours over a lot of years, man. A lot of great stories, a lot of laughs, um, a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, certainly, I mean, I certainly wouldn't be here. My life wouldn't be like it is without, without him, no question. And then just past the professional side, just, you know, great friends, you know, so miss them very much. Uh, to college football, I mean, college football wouldn't be like it is now. Um, from, you know, what he did offensively, um, kind of fearlessness in the way that he coached, uh, the, the people that he hired, I mean, you start tracing back his tree, it's kind of it's kind of crazy, you know, but he, uh, he, he changed a lot, man. That's why I, 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 you know, brought that up in my opening statement. I just... We, we don't need to miss the impact. You know, there's, there's winning games, then there's impact. He had impact. Thanks, Coach. We're going to a little story of future on him awesome. on our Texas Tech site. So thank Fantastic. you very much. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Yes, Lincoln, you've been in multiple conferences now. There's maybe a way that you go about building your roster when you're in the Big 12 versus the Pac-12. Now you're in the Big 10 where there's at least a certain style. Do you have to maybe change some of the ways in which you attack recruiting in terms of what regions you go into and how you go about building a roster when you're trying to compete in the Big Ten versus maybe compete in the Big 12 or the Pac-12? Yeah, I, I think, you know, playing the schedule that we're going to play now, I think it opens you up more in some regions. I mean, you can even tell, even before we've played a snap in the Big Ten, you look at, I mean, last year we signed kids from Minnesota. We can sit, we signed kids from Michigan. Um, you know, you could already feel that interest even before this officially starts. Uh, so, uh, and, and listen, USC's always been a national brand. It always will be, but but I think maybe even more access there before. And, and yeah, certainly, you know, you're trying to build, you know, to me in two ways. I mean, you're building for the teams, you know, that, that you're going to play and what you feel like it's going to take to win those games year in and year out in your conference. But then, you know, there's also a bigger picture for us. We're building to be a in the national championship race every single year. And that's that's what you come for at USC. And so some of this is, I mean, you know, as I've said a few times, I mean, listen, we didn't take over one that was a national championship contender and just walk into it, right? Like this was a, this was a revamp. And so there, this has been a, a, a rebuild from a roster standpoint. And some of this would have been happening, whether we were the Pac-12 was still the Pac-12 or, or this change would have happened. But certainly we got an idea of who we're playing and, and are making the adjustments necessary and all of that to help best equip us in the Big Ten. How do you think that rebuild is going as you enter year three here? Do you think it's on schedule or ahead of schedule or behind schedule? Well, it's definitely not behind. I mean, look, they won four the year before. We won 19 the last two. I mean, we've – so it's it's not behind. I mean, it, it, it can never get here fast enough, right, especially at a blue blood, and that's the difference, right? It's And, you know, I've been lucky that the last – gosh, whatever it is, nine years or whatever it's been, I've been in a Blue Blood program. So I've, I've seen, you know, I've, I've kind of, I've gotten a front row seat to, you know, what life in these is like. And and so it, it can't happen soon enough. And we fight and scratch and claw every single day to to get it to where it's got to be. There's some things that we were able to, to amend quickly and get pretty competitive pretty quickly. There's also some things that take time that no matter how hard you try and what you do, like there's still, you know, you can't revamp a roster and all the freshman classes and, and, you know, stacking those classes. Like you can't do four years worth of work in one year. Like it just, it can't happen. You know, you can't build a brand new facility in one year and get it all planned and designed and move heaven and earth like we did to get it done. I mean, like this, all this stuff takes time, man. And uh, so now I think we're, we've made progress in every way that you can possibly measure. Um, especially, and I think people that were around the program before have a greater respect for that probably than the ones that just see USC out from a distance. Um, but we're coming, we're coming quickly. Lincoln, there's always pressure like coaching at Blue Blood, but is there any like added pressure with the move to the Big Ten? There's been a lot of talk about this kind of being the premier conference in all of college football, and obviously the reigning national champions in the conference. Is there added pressure at moving conferences? Honestly, I don't think so. I mean, I, you know, it's, 
to me, it's, you know, I got asked this at OU, I got asked this at, at SC. It's not about the pressure. Like, it's about the opportunity. And, you know, the opportunities that we've had have been great. I think you know, in some ways the opportunities will even be better in this conference because of the matchups um, that are going to happen. And, and, and obviously with the expanded playoff and all of that, like, I think it's going to be a great thing. But, like, you know, to sit here and say this is going to, like, massively change the expectations at USC, I mean, you know, again, and I'm not making it up. I mean, the guys, you know, that were there the first day I came in to a four-win team, and I said our our expectations are championships this year when we put ourselves right on the doorstep of that pretty quick. So, I mean, I just think that's that's just part of it at a place like this, and no matter what conference you're in, it's, it's always going to be. It's That's why Blue Bloods are a little bit different than all the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Surprise! I guess that first year to make the conference title game, but you've always, you as a head coach, have always been like at the top of like expectations. Do you, do you personally kind of embrace that you're not necessarily picked to be at the top of this league right away? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, like when I got when I got hired. Uh, at OU, I mean, everybody thought it was crazy and that the program was going to tank. So listen, I mean, I, <laughs> you know, like I've, I just, I don't get high and low with, with all of that. Like I, I know the outside world does, and I know a lot of people like to sensationalize things, but like that's not. It's one, it's not accurate, and two, it's not reality. Like it's, you know, I. I don't really care. Like, I'm either going to be standing up here and they're going to be talking to me about why we were picked to win the conference or standing here about talking to me while we were this or that. And then at the end of the season, nobody's going to give a damn about where you were picked. Like, you're going to go play and it's going to be what it is. So um, I, I try to find motivation in either one. If if you pick against us, I guess, hey, well, you know, we want to prove you wrong. And if you pick us, I want to justify it, right? But um, no, I, I, I've been a, a part of both and I just – I don't know, just the more years you go through it, you just, you realize more and more like that stuff really doesn't matter. It really has no impact. It's it's going to be decided right out here like it should. I think in talking to Jonah, talking to Jonah, he said there was an initiative on the offensive line to get bigger. I'm assuming that happened on the defensive line. Obvious question, is that in response to, to playing in this league? The defensive line was, was probably more in response to the scheme change um, and the style. Um, but uh, but I, I don't want to say that, you know, playing in this league, it wasn't, wasn't a factor. Um, the, the defensive line was more, was more drastic, right? Like it was more, you're trying to turn, you know, 285 pound bodies into, you know, guys now are 310, you know, you're talking some big jobs. The O-line, Yes, we wanted to get bigger. I don't know that there was anybody that we were like, all right, hey, he just mass, he, he's got to just go crazy or like we're way far away. Some of it is we're going to play with a few young guys, um, you know, like an Elijah Page that just physically needed that regardless of where we were playing. But now we are bigger. Uh, the numbers would suggest right now we're, we're quite a bit bigger, quite a bit stronger than we've been up there in the past. Again, he's gotten you... those latest numbers on the defense. Like, I don't know, you have to tell him so. No, nah, we're doing. We're finishing up. They're finishing up off season tomorrow, so we'll have. But I mean, I know. I mean, like D line wise, I mean, we we put on three hundred plus pounds just in the, uh, just in the first. I mean, up until spring ball, so what the first two months of off season. So it's pretty significant. Divided by the rotation, or divided by divided by everybody in the D line room. Yeah. Lincoln, when you mentioned when you mentioned the, the, the rebuild and that reality, how do you balance that with also the expectation? You know, like you said, that USC wants to be the premier program. And, you know, the, the Big Ten. What is kind of the, the immediate expectation for this roster coming up? How do you balance the rebuild status? For this roster, I mean, to, to win this. I mean, they, they never, it never changes. Like, it's 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 always the same. And then then the season's going to be over, and then are you taking steps um, to put yourself not just there the following year, but for years to come? How do you rebound a run defense that ranks in 110th in yards per carry allowed last year while joining the league? That is known for the big cruising. Um, yeah, coach better and you play better. You know, I mean, it's it's. There's great examples of it happening. I mean, look at uh, you know, look at the guy that we hired as defensive coordinator. You know, he, he authored a, a tremendous turnaround. 
you know, I was a part of a, a similar turnaround at Oklahoma when we struggled a little bit uh, the first year and a half that I was there and then, you know, made a defensive change similar to this. And then all of a sudden defense became the strength of that team. And so there's a, there's a ton of examples of how it can happen. Uh, and it's the answer is a little bit of everything, right? Coaching a little bit better, uh, scheming a little bit better, developing a little bit better, recruiting a little bit better. And, then, and some of it for us is just letting take hold what we've been doing the last few years, like you saw in the bowl, in the bowl game. Like it's, you know, when you continue to recruit, you continue to bring in high level people, you, you get facilities right. Like as you, as you, you start just, it's like you got a list of things that, that from being in championship programs, you know you have to do well to be at this level. And there's just like a list that you just try to keep checking boxes and you keep checking those and those things keep taking hold. Eventually you'll be right there where you want to be. Big Ten guys who are you know, incumbents have said well, those West Coast teams, you know, they enjoy the sun too much, they can't play in the cold, they don't run the ball or defend the run like we would defend the run. Why do you think that perception exists of your Pac-12 schools? Uh, I don't know. I really don't care. We'll find out in the fall. Why is, why is it wrong? Again, I mean, that's, that's all going to get proven out here no matter what I say in front of a mic, you know. I mean, listen, that's – you want to go compare football history? So I'll put ours up against anybody's. I mean, like, and the Big Ten's got some teams with some phenomenal histories, but, you know, we're, we're not just learning how to play football. Like in the Thank Big Ten, you. Commissioner, yesterday was talking about the scheduling with all the conferences and teams being nationwide now. Is there anything different, like, preparation-wise, when you have a game that's from coast to coast, like you're going to go play in Michigan? And, I mean, is there anything different when you have to account for a kind of full day of travel? Yeah, you know, we, we, we've gotten some kind of some test runs on this. I mean, obviously, you know, coming out here to play Notre Dame, you know, it's not a it's not a whole lot different in terms of the travel. Um, uh, you know, there's some things in terms of recovery. Um, uh, you know, I think for us probably be a little bit more leading up to the game um, that will certainly try to accelerate. And, and this new facility is going to be, you know, the preeminent facility in the country, in my opinion, for recovery, among other things. Um, and then, you know, it, for us, we're, we're fortunate on the back end because we're going to gain all the hours coming back. So the recovery for the opposing teams coming our way and then going east, you know, post-game will be and, – and preparation for the next game will probably be a little more challenging for them than it is for us. Um, so, yeah, I, I honestly – like NFL teams have been doing it forever and now. I mean, do you see anybody in the NFL making a big deal about, oh, my God, the Rams got to go play the Giants? Like, I, I, I think at some point after this first year, it's not going to be a topic. I think we'll be all sitting at media day next year, and I don't think we'll be answering many questions. But I understand it right now, and we, we do got to be aware of it. We got to do it well. Uh, but I think if we do, I think it'll be a minimal impact. You mentioned the new facility. Reflecting on this journey, at what point this patience was tested the most? And he said the 22 championship game. Mm-hmm. Recall talking to him after that, having a conversation about his future. And everything. We did, yeah, we did, and he, you know, he was, you know, like any competitor, he's, you know, he just, I think more than anything, wanted to make sure that I still had confidence in him, and that the reason I didn't put him in the game and take Caleb out, what didn't have, you know, he wanted to make sure it didn't have to do with my lack of confidence in him, which it didn't. I mean, I remember I said on the headsets many times, hey, if Caleb can't go, like Miller go in there and he'll play well, like I. But it was, you know, Caleb was functional enough at that time and had been playing at a high enough level. It was hard, it was hard to take him out. So, um, yeah, now I remember having a conversation and I was open and honest with him. And, you know, obviously it's been, been great that he's that he stayed and stuck through it. And I think he's gotten a lot better because of that. When it comes to West Coast recruiting, Lincoln, SC and Oregon have been the preeminent two on the West Coast for many years. What has it been like recruiting against Oregon in your tenure? And, and how has it changed in the last year when you know, the news of them joining the league and how, how has that changed, if at all, how, how recruiting has been like against them in your tenure? I don't know, Matt. We're, we, we recruit against so many people. You know, there's rarely a player that comes up that it's just you and this other school. I feel like it used to be a little bit more like that. I mean, now you're recruiting against – you're recruiting against everybody because everybody travels. You know, a lot of teams come to the West Coast. West Coast teams go – go to the east or to the midwest like i mean there's rarely a player that comes up that's just you and another school so we recruit against a lot of other good schools um a lot of schools that um have maybe in some ways had a have a little bit of a head start on us right especially if you look at the last few years but uh um we have some inherent advantages that nobody else has and as we continue to catch up everybody's going to see that more and more you, you mentioned the facilities and obviously the rebuild part of this 
when you took over versus where you are now, has this rebuild maybe been, I don't know if tedious is the right word, but I'll just use that there, a little bit more tedious than you maybe anticipated it being? No, I mean, I, I, I knew... I knew it was going to take a lot. Like, I, I, I knew that, and I was ready for that. You don't always know what every single challenge is going to be until you actually, like, get in there and open up the hood, right? Like, but I knew there's a reason why it had underachieved, um, and we're going to have to figure out what those reasons are. We're going to have to fix them. But I was very much a believer and still in, uh, I'm even more so now that the firepower in this program has not gone anywhere. Like, it's <laughs> – it's still here. Like the good, the things that are good in this program are so good and are things that really can't be duplicated. And so when you get all the other parts right, which is what we know how to do, then I think those will shine the kind of like they did for so many years, you know, you know, back in the 2000s and all the other great times in history that USC has been, been at the top. And, uh, but it's just, it's a process to get there. Has my patience been tested on it? Yeah, hell yeah. Like, I no, no doubt. Like, it's every day. Um, but my resolve hasn't been tested. My commitment to being here hasn't been tested. Like, I know this is the right place. I, I just, I know what this is going to be. And that's, that's what makes the confidence every day, whether the day goes perfectly the way you want it or, you know, the day, something goes wrong that day. Like, I don't ever leave that day, like, discouraged. Like, because there's just a bigger picture to what we're building here. And I'm, I'm really focused on that. And I'm really confident in what we're doing um, and that we're doing it at the right place. There's a new thing in college football literally every day. And you're trying to rebuild a Blue Blood program. Has it ever felt like you were trying to play catch up with where other schools were at the level USC is supposed to be at? Rat. Oh, for sure. We're, we are playing catch up. Like that's, <laughs> we're, we're playing catch up in facilities. We're playing catch up in NIL. We've been playing catch up in resources within the park. We've been playing catch up in damn near every way that you could think of. But when we catch up, and we are going to catch up, that's when the things that this place has that others don't shows up again, and it's coming. Lincoln, what do you anticipate the biggest improvement with your defense? Makes up spring. I would, based off a of spring ball, I would say I would say tackling, um, and I thought we took some really good steps in the bowl game. I know it was referenced in the in the big press conference earlier, um, you know, and, and I think tackling there, there's so much to it, right? It's everybody thinks what's well, just the physical act of tackling somebody. It's being in position, you know. It's knowing where your help is. It's knowing how I need to leverage this block. It's the fundamentals, like it's 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 all of that, and I just. Uh, I felt like I saw a group this spring that made some really, really big strides that way, and obviously that's going to be a key statistic for us. Lincoln, Both Miller and Kamari highlighted today and the growth he made this summer. Can you speak to that and maybe how ready he might be to contribute at some point this year? He's one of those guys, man, when the light comes on, it's going to be bright. I mean, he's he's a really, really talented kid. You know, this spring had absolutely no clue what he was doing, um, but a great kid. and. Like how his body has changed is, he already looked good when we signed him, but the way his body has changed is, I mean, he walks in the door right now and he looks like an NFL defensive lineman. And uh, he's learning the game. You know, Coach Henney and, and, and Coach New have been great for him. And I, I certainly wouldn't put it past him to be able to contribute, but like, he's one of those guys, like, you can just feel like it's just a matter of time. How, how do you flash on the radar for you guys? Yeah, I give uh, Weston Zernickel and our personnel staff a, a, a real shout out. Kind of found him was a little bit under the radar, was a body type with when we made the hire with Coach Land that we were really excited about um, there towards the end and uh, and got a chance to get to know the kid really just kind of, we, we really just were kind of enamored with the kid and his personality and just the quality of person he was and um, just continue to progress from there. How does that opener against LSU like, training camp and in the future, like that going to be a little bit yeah I think if the conferences stay the way they are or excuse me if the playoff stays the way that it is right now then I think you'll see less and less of those especially with us in the SEC um, just because our our schedules are already going to be so good at some point you you're like all right is, is are we getting is the right the, the is the juice worth the squeeze right in terms of playing these games? I think as competitors, we all want to play these games. Now, 
uh, if and when the playoff shifts again. Um, if you start talking about, you know, if something were to happen, let's say like, you know, guaranteed spots, um, you know, even more guaranteed spots in some of these uh, conferences, all of that, then I think it could lend itself to these games being back um, and more prevalent, which would be good for the game because, I mean, games like this are awesome. Is that why the Ole Miss series got canceled? Say it again. Is that why the Ole Miss series got canceled? To my to my knowledge, yes. Yeah, that was kind of in the works for a while. But, I mean, you you know, you got a responsibility to what do you think is going to put you in the best best position to do it. And I mean, we probably have a just about as good argument as anybody in college football because, you know, we've got a, a yearly game against – uh, you know, a good good opponent in Notre Dame along with the schedule. So um, it was, but I mean, like the hard thing right now is with all this scheduling is you're having to make scheduling decisions so many years in advance, but then all this is changing and you're not exactly sure what system that you're scheduling for, which is a challenge. When that series gets canceled, Lincoln, and then Joe Castiglione says that you didn't want to stay there to, to play in the SEC. I'm not getting into that. Next question. Coach, I want to talk about the weather environment. I, I've never felt like it was that much of a factor. I mean, done the snow games and all the other stuff. Now, I'm not saying if you don't get one like, uh, was it uh, Ohio State, maybe Northwestern? Maybe I saw this last year was so it win. Know, yeah, win. I mean, now listen, that don't matter where you play. That's going to be a challenge no matter what. Or if you get a you know, a driving rainstorm or you're playing a blizzard or whatever. But yeah, sure, if you get the crazy extremes, that's going to be different for, for everybody and everybody's going to have to adjust. I, again, I – you got to go do it. We got to go prove it. But I just, I, I feel like football players go play. I think that's more of an inconvenience for fans than it is for players. Like when you look at the uh, defensive line, you bring in Gavin Meyer from Wyoming, offensive line, you guys pretty much stand pat through the spring quarter window. There's a lot of young guys in that room. How do you evaluate where you guys are at at the line of scrimmage heading into uh, the Big Ten and the readiness to compete there? Yeah, I think it's just a sign for us that we feel like a lot of the, the players that we've recruited and developed over the last few years are ready to play. And uh, at some point as a program, you got to decide, you got enough confidence in the guys you've been recruiting or developing, or are you just going to keep going portal, portal, portal? And that's, as I've told you guys, long term, that's not what I want to be. I, I want to use the portal here and there, but I want us to be a developmental program. And, um, you know, certainly the, the lines of scrimmage and, and not going very portal heavy at all, really on either one. I think show that we're you know doubling down on that notion. Like in the general manager role in college football is seemingly grown a lot and is continuing to grow. With revenue sharing on the horizon, with NIL still uncertain, how big do you feel like that role will be in the future? And how have you you know evaluated where Dave Emmerich has been in, in, in just sort of navigating those landscape changes? Yeah, everybody's going to, you know, everybody has, and then everybody will use that role differently, you know, coming forward. And it's not, you're going forward. It's not, and it's not just going to be a GM. I mean, you're talking about, you know, there's going to be significant staff changes all across college football to get ready for revenue sharing and salary caps. And I mean, it's, you know, it's very much going towards a, a very professional model from a staff standpoint. Everybody's going to do it in their own way. Um, but that's, that part's going to be important. Um, I think Dave's done a really good job. You know, he's 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 worked hand in hand with our collective, and I know we've already talked off, you know, we're talked off this side. I mean, which is our collective has made a massive jump. I mean, again, starting from <laughs> zero, I mean, zero point zero zero when we got there to to now, he's done a great job with that. Uh, Dave played a prominent role in hiring this defensive staff that everybody's giddy about right now, um, and has helped us put together. Uh, really that group and done an outstanding job. He's done a lot of things behind the scenes with our with our new facility. Um, and I think certainly his role is going to evolve going forward, as is really the rest of that department for us. Lincoln, your first Big Ten game is in Ann Arbor at Michigan. What mm -hmm. are your expectations of opening your Big Ten play that way? And how much of a stylistic change is that compared to maybe what you used to see when you open up that club? Um, yeah, we're looking forward to the game. Um, you know, I haven't had a chance to, to coach in, in many Big Ten venues. I think just Ohio State my first year, we got to go there the second game, um, which was fun, and, and uh, this will be another fun one. So, yeah, I, you know, I think the, the like, just the college football fan in me, like, that's pretty damn cool that USC and Michigan are opening up, like, the new Big Ten. And, like, to me, no surprise that the Big Ten would pick 
you know, those two schools and brands to kind of kick this thing off. So I think that's awesome. Um, the coach of me is like, yeah, it's going to be great to go compete against a, a really good football team. And I lo I've always loved coaching on the road. So perfect way to, to be introduced to the Big Ten. How was the process of offseason scouting been different this year? You have had to have all your opponents to kind of get familiar with. And, um, have you done different things to kind of get the speed? Yeah, we have. We've, uh, you know, because we're getting, you know, we're obviously getting a new defensive staff up to speed, not only on obviously our people, but then everybody else that we're playing. Um, we've got some, obviously got some teams coming up that had some pretty significant coaching changes. So in, in some ways you're studying, you know, personnel that, that other people have versus, you know, you know, maybe this coach coached at this place or at that place. So you've got to certainly take that into account. Um, yeah, it's been good. It's We've had a lot of time to familiarize ourselves with the league. You know, the teams that are upcoming, you know, starting to project what we're going to see and what we're going to want to be able to do. And, uh, yeah, I would say those projects this this year have probably been a little bit more extensive in the past just because of all the new new changes, new opponents. Obviously, he's in a different role, but with Chip Kelly being a play caller in the Big Ten, uh, what do you kind of think of what his offense can look like in the Big Ten and if he can succeed? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure he can succeed. He's a really good coach. Uh, Chip's a good friend. Um, you know, I know he's you know looking forward to that opportunity, and he's got a bunch of good players there. And, and uh, you know, it'll be he and Ryan will have to go coexist, which that'll be fun. Um, but and they'll do a good job. And I know they're they're they've got history, and and uh, um, uh, so we we've laughed about that a little bit. But no, they'll I think he'll do a really good job. Like I said, Chips, you know, obviously had a great offensive history throughout his past, and uh, I know he's looking forward to the to the challenge. How, how well, do you know, what will he bring to that? to that uh, table, Lincoln, a little bit more emphasis on the running game, you know, having coached against him for a couple of years. What, what, what do you think he'll specifically bring Chip? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to, like, profess myself as an expert on what they were doing before, but I, I the Chip's really creative. He's really creative in the running game and in the passing game, you know, and, and uh, has always been that way. So his ability to do both and marry him up, I'm sure will show up there. Well, you know Ryan very well. What did you mean did last year at UCLA? What would be considered a success for well, I, I expect that we'll make a big jump. I do. Now, can you, can you, you know, do you sit there and say, oh, it's not a success if we don't jump, you know, 80 spots in the rankings or whatever that they did there? I don't know that I'd want to put a number on it, but I mean, I want it to, I want it to look and feel and, and, and I want us to play, you know, a lot different. And I think much closer to our capabilities. I mean, that's the thing to me is you, you have in your mind, all right, this is what we have. This is kind of what we feel like the level we can play at. And, and are we playing to a level that's that or close to that and doing it consistently the way the guys are playing? Um, does that show up? Are we making improvements throughout the year? Are our guys developing? And if that happens, then the numbers tend to take care of themselves. Lincoln, over the last few years, you guys have, I think, offered more guys out of Texas than any other state in general. And it seems like you try pretty hard to establish a, consi a consistent recruiting foothold in the South, particularly defensively the last couple of years. What has been the process of that? And, and how do you kind of maintain that and fight with, you know, SEC schools, Big Ten schools? What is the process that goes into that? Yeah, we've just we've tried not to, you know, overthink too much of where where these players are at. If they've got legitimate interest and we feel like they're the right type of fit for our school and for our program, then then we're going to go recruit them. And uh, we obviously we all have a lot of Texas, or a lot of us have a lot of Texas ties, um, and a lot of ends there. And so we've tried to take advantage of that. And we've we've been able to bring a lot of really good players to to USC from Texas and those other states. And so. And, and kind of like to the question earlier, I mean, you're going to battle, you're going to battle schools no matter where you go, right? There's not like an area that you're, whether close to home or away from home, that you're not going to battle other people. And so, I don't really get too concerned about who we're going to battle. To me, it's more about finding the right fits, and then let's go after them. Lincoln, you've what been is in the, the Big Twelve? You've been in the Pac-12. I think I've got most of them. What are, you, what are you expecting? The biggest difference now joining the Big Ten, either style of play. Or do you, are you going to find out? Yeah, probably in some ways we'll find out a little. I mean, I think the, I mean, compared to the Pac-12, I mean, I think the, I think the road venues are going to consistently be better. Um, and I mean, I think you're talking about just a, a deeper, you know, more talented, more good teams in terms of conference. Now you're not playing everybody, so. You know, some of that gets offset a little bit, but yeah, you're talking about a, a real high quality conference that I mean, year in and year out is 
you know, if you go win this conference, you know, you're probably one of the best one, two, or three teams in the country. I mean, right? Like, it's it's going to take that every single year to win this thing, which is cool, man. That's what you want to be in. Like when, when you're talking to Coach Lynn about coming to work, how much, what are the conversations like about, you know, what he needs in practice for the defense and, and what you need in practice for the offense? Yeah, I... I I, I've always I've always been one on that that I'll I'll adapt to what you know defensively feel like that we need you know I feel like you know I, I can adapt I feel like our offensive staff can adapt to whatever it is and certainly in a situation like this where you know we're putting in a new defense it's a new defensive staff we've leaned heavily on you know whatever the defensive emphasis needed to be for that day that's how we designed the practice that's how we you know scheduled the reps we've uh, and we've worked and fit very well together on that so far that's been seamless considering the short amount of time we've worked together and you mentioned the bodies that he's looking for does he tell you coming in, okay here's here are what I what I want out of a defensive lineman this is what my corners should look like and do you have input on that too or do you feel like okay you do what you do no that was part of the hiring process was you know he and I both being pretty candid with each other on, on what we saw, not just from a scheme standpoint, but who we're bringing in, how we're developing them. That was a big part of you know making sure that we were going to be on the same page because I didn't, I didn't want either one of us to have to really compromise a lot. I was looking for somebody that had very much shared beliefs on what we're doing, and, and our beliefs are similar enough that, that we are very much on the same page with, with what we want, and now we got to go get it. Yeah. Well, we've never had to even think that way, right? And and now, you know, now it's 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 going to be interesting. You're going to get put in some, yeah, you're going to get put in some interesting uh, positions, right? Like uh, like take us our first year at SC. You know, we we beat UCLA. We're in the championship game. We play Notre Dame before the championship game. What do you do now? You know, no, you don't. Obviously, you go, but I mean, like, you know, you're gonna be t- you're gonna be thinking that way some. You know, especially like you said, considering that you know, you may have however many games left, and you're gonna have to put you know place value on those. And you know, we see it in the NFL now. We see it in other sports. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be in those positions. Where we're gonna have to make those decisions. So hopefully, we put ourselves in that position pretty quick. Um, but yeah, it's, it'll all be part of the strategy so you're now. You're talking about actually resting players and not playing them like they do in the NFL in the regular season finale if they've locked up the playoff game? It's possible. Now, you know, ours right now, I mean, you still got to win. You know, you still got to win your conference championship. But, I mean, even then, you know, like like let, let's say you already qualify for the conference championship, but you maybe you weren't going to be, you know, a number one or number two seed. You'd already – you know, lost a game or two, and you weren't probably going to be that, and you had a marquee game against, like, Notre Dame coming up like us, like, how do you handle that? And that's interesting to think about, you know, and it's, you know, we've started to have some initial conversations about those scenarios. Now, you know, where your roster's at at that point and all that, there's there's so many other factors that go in. It's hard to sit here and say today what you would do, but, like, do those things cross your mind? Uh, are those things that we're going to have to deal with in the future? Yes. I don't really. I would love to. I would love to. I know. I know it means you know a lot to a lot of people, and so the the again the purest in you, no doubt. Now, if if you get in a position where you got to make a decision on what's best for SC to help us win a national championship versus keeping that, shoot, then then you got to look at it. I mean, and listen, we we're not the first example of that. Look all the way across the country. There's been a lot of other teams sacrifice. Uh, rivalry games. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but you know, as as we get into this playoff structure, and if it changes or not, we end this new conference. Like we're going to learn some about this as we go, and and what the right and the best track is, you know, to winning a national championship. Like that's going to evolve. You know, like you know, like you know, I, Bama was ahead of the curve for years. I thought on how they scheduled in the non-conference. Right? They would occasionally hit the marquee non-conference game. They played two other. You know, not very good teams. They play one late, so that they got the they got essentially a little bit of a bye week right there late in the season when your you know season's been going on. You're a little beat up. Like they didn't schedule for their fans. Like they scheduled to win championships. And so, 
I, my hope is we can do the best thing, schedule to win championships, and that includes a rivalry game that, you know, for all that comes with that and all that it means. But if you get in those positions, you got to make a decision on what the priority is. And, yeah, it's not an easy, it's not an easy answer. Do you think or hope the committee evaluates that in the sense of you're playing nine league games plus two power non-conference games, the SEC's playing eight. Nine and three, eight and four. I mean, do you hope the committee or what do you expect the committee to really? I feel like they were conditioned to look at the loss column and that's it. But with the 12 teams, they, they, well, in the past, they have been. There's no question. Out, losses, no matter who they're to, have outweighed anything else, and history has told us that. Now, when now that you have two, I mean, I super conferences or whatever you want to call these two, you got two conferences that are way out front of everybody else right now. All right. And there's going to have to be a shift in thinking like there, there has to be or th- th- it, it won't work. And so do they va- how much value do they place on the ninth game? How much value do they place on playing, you know, Notre Dame versus, you know, some directional school? Right. Like it's it's going to it, it's going to have a big impact on how we all schedule in the future. So, you know, if they want these matchups then they need to value them accordingly. What you're scheduling. talking about. Like- Minimum, how many teams do you think the Big Ten should be getting on a year-to-year basis in the college football playoff? Uh, that's a hard question. I mean, I you know, obviously would like to see it unfold, but, I mean, it's it, it, if you're talking about just truly the best teams, I mean, it's hard to me to imagine that this league not having at least three in. I mean, it's just it's kind of hard to imagine when you look at who's in it. And there are probably be years you could argue even more than that. Um, again, we'll see how it evolves. And I've, I've been on the other side of the coin. I've, I've – I've been in all the playoff discussions. I've been, you know, I've, you know, you've been one of those teams that's right there on the doorstep of it. I am very much a proponent of all the conference champions getting in, and that was a great move that needed to happen. But past that, it's got to be the best teams. Well, you can, uh, before uh, the old system, you could still have a successful year if you didn't get in the playoffs. You one of those teams that was in it just because I'm not giving it. Sure. With a 12 team playoffs, is that kind of a line of demarcation of successful season versus unsuccessful season. If you don't get in, yeah. it's not a successful season. It depends where you're at, um, yeah. for sure. USC. Yeah, for us, oh, no question. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, that's that's kind of that line of the, uh, you know, the New Year's Six Bowl games right now in a way, right? It's just we kind of set the line back a little bit. But, no, I yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if your expectations are high, that, that's that's a pretty good, pretty good vantage point. On scheduling, I think there was a uh, report that you guys were looking at that accurate or not no accurate? no we never looked at shifting it um it was it was far enough down the line that i don't think that was ever realistic from from either side i think both sides took a look at it because obviously they had changes in their conference just like we did that that were, weren't the same when when we scheduled the game and obviously the playoff system was different i mean everything was different so you know we've, we've tried to look at every game that we can in the future uh lsu you know Certain LSU, the referenced Ole Miss, every non-conference game that we've played, we've looked at it and said, all right, you know, do these make sense given what else we know that we're playing and just trying to set the best schedule for that we can. Let's do one more. Going back to Miller okay. once more. Uh, you said earlier, right, you're trying to just go catch up with facilities, with NIL. Like, what do you think is going to be the next Now, honestly, it's just these things like, like taking hold right it's the like we've done all the hard work for the facility now we just got to build it you know like we've we've got the uh, an incredible nil program right now now it's just got to continue to grow and gain momentum and catch up from the head start that that some of these other places have on us you know we've got a great defensive staff in right now but you know we got to let it take hold so we can go put the product on the field and we can go recruit at the level that we want to recruit you know, we put in two great classes, but man, we want to get that to four. We got a true, you know, real roster, real championship level roster that is that has the depth that it takes. So, some of it is getting things in place, and then some of it is actually there's those things taking hold. And that we're we're kind of we're we're trending out of the get things in place, and we're trending more into this let these things take hold now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah. Go back to Miller one last time. Just to, over the course of your two and a half plus years together. Do you recall a point that he kind of won your trust or won you over you know, behind the scenes or just that point where you really saw the potential that this could one day be our guy? Um, 
you know, I think I think after the first year, because um, he he had a lot of people that, that doubted him. You know, even like a lot of people told me coming in that you know they doubted him or you know didn't know if he had what it took. Blah blah blah. And then after the first year, you know, and after that that championship game you referenced earlier, we talked for a while and. You know, and I told him I did very much believe in him from what I'd seen the year, but there were also a lot of areas he was going to have to really take a big jump on. And I just think the guy is, he's got a, he's got a lot of alpha in him, you know, and he's got a lot of, he's got a lot of want to and substance. And, and I've just seen him tirelessly work and, and be, be incredibly selfless along the way. And he's just, he's just turned himself into one of the most respected people in our program. And, and just, uh, I just see how he's embraced every single challenge that's come his way. I, I've been really impressed with. Thank right. you, Coach Thanks, Ryan. everybody. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Appreciate it.